Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on how to get started when it comes to laser engraving, cutting, and marking. Uh, I'm your host, Zach Dewhurst, the Business Development Manager at Deco Network, and this week's guest is James Stanaway, the Director of Marketing at Epilogue Laser. How's it going, James? Great. How are you doing today, Zach? I'm doing great. I, I'll be completely honest. I'm extremely excited to talk about uh, all things engraving because in my shop, we do practically everything but engraving. And the more shops I've been talking to recently, I was just at an event, uh, Shirt Lab Tribe, and I was at a dinner and I was sitting next to a guy who bought an epilogue uh, laser engraving machine. And for over an hour, I heard him say, it's the best piece of equipment I've bought in years. I really wish I had done it a lot sooner. You know, he was talking about, hey, I go overseas. I get these Stanley cups for like $8 a piece. You know, I, we engrave on them and now I'm selling them for 28. So, um, you know, I, I, we'd already talked about doing this webinar way back then, uh, you know, over a month ago, but just hearing firsthand, uh, just this past weekend, the power of an engraving, um, you know, equipment and just all the different types of types of engraving, I guess, you know, and, and that's what I'm, I, I am not going to pretend to be an expert. That's why I'm glad you're driving the day, James, but uh, it's everything from etching to marking. Um, you know, again, I went to my event and what did they do? They gave, uh, everybody a, um, journal here. And obviously it was marked with an engraving machine. Everybody had their name on it. It, it just, the perceived value, um, is really high and you can do a lot of different things with, you know, engraving tools, everything from promo products, um, to drinkware, to trophies, awards, um, you name it. So lots of different types of engraving, uh, equipment, different, um, you know, industries you can pursue with it. So James, why don't you go ahead and uh, start driving and, uh, tell us a bit more about yourself and epilogue. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, lasers are so exciting. So I love talking about them. So a uh, little bit about who I am. Uh, I am the director of marketing at Epilogue. Um, I've actually been there since 2001. Uh, came in when the company was really small and uh, I've enjoyed watching it grow over the years. It's been a lot of fun to see how we've been able to take this technology that was originally designed more for the awards industry and uh, bring it to so many different industries that are using it for really exciting things. Uh, every time I talk to customers, it's something different they're doing. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of experience in business development, sales, marketing, and obviously lasers, because I use them all the time. You know, uh, when you've got one, you know, right outside your office door, it's hard not to want to go out and play with it. Or at Christmas, you get a lot of requests for uh, customized gifts too. <laughs> And James, I, I, yeah. I go to a lot of trade shows and over the years, one, one thing that has always impacted me. So epilogue, full disclosure, guys, not, not sugarcoating. Epilogue is a leader when it comes to all things engraving. Um, they, there's just no question. They are, you guys are like the M and R of engraving. It, it uh, I, I kind of joke that if the equipment has blue in it, it's really good quality or, or again, Deco network has blue. So M and R is blue. Hotronics is blue. Epilogue is blue. I mean, my shop is blue. So I, I know what brand I'm going with. I just don't know which version of the, the machine. But but yeah, Epilogue is, you guys are seen as the leader. Um, and, and just everybody I've ever talked to about it. Um, the company is just, yeah, very awesome. But what I was getting at is um, the Aztec calendar for years. If you're ever at a trade show, walk by. And you'll see the tiny Aztec calendar um, that's, I mean, just the amount of detail and everything in it. And I've seen it over a decade now, and it still impresses me every single time. And even in the past, you know, you said you've been a part of the company for 21 years. The equipment has gotten cheaper and cheaper. And, and at least the options to get into engraving have been. Um, so, yeah, James, tell us more about what we're all going to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the Aztec calendar is always a fun story because uh, about 20 years ago, someone at work came to me and said uh, they'd seen a huge engraving of the Aztec calendar and they're like, can we do this really, really small? And so we said, you know, let's test it out and see. And it's become our sample ever since because, I mean, it just shows off the Absolutely. speed and the quality of the laser. When you can run the laser as fast as we do, 
and get that detail. It's pretty amazing. So it uh, is. You know, I've often been asked, are, are you ever going to change your sample? And it's like, I can't find anything that shows off as well as that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It, it's extremely impressive. Yeah. So yeah, today we're going to be covering a few different things. Uh, we'll start out with uh, types of lasers and kind of go into some more, a little bit more specifics about what kinds of lasers we manufacture, what they're good for, what you can use them uh, in different applications. Uh, also, how laser technology works a bit uh, without going too much into detail, but uh, get a kind of a broad overview of that area as well. Um, you know, another one that is very popular conversation is uh, practical and profitable laser applications. So once you have a laser, what you can be doing with it to make money. And I mean, that's really why you want to get into lasering is to be able to make money with them. And uh, we'll also go through a few favorite features of our customers and some of my favorite features as well. Uh, things that I find really help me uh, in my process of creating different designs and uh, getting them onto the laser. So first, a little bit about Epilogue. Um, like I said, I've been there 23 years. We've been around even longer. Uh, it, they began manufacturing laser systems in the back of a garage back in 1988. Uh, the founders of the, were the ones who came up kind of with the first small format CO2 laser system. So uh, it was a really exciting technology at the time. Uh, and like I said, it started out in the awards industry. So um, uh, before that, everyone was using bits that would actually engrave into the awards pieces. This allowed them to more quickly create awards and uh, be able to customize very, very fast. Um, we design and manufacture CO2, fiber, and dual source systems. We'll get a little bit more into that later. And then also Galvo laser systems. Uh, we're known for having the highest resolution engraving and fast cutting. So. Uh, not only can you get very small detail, but you can do it at high speed, which is a, a unique feature of our system. We're dedicated to US manufacturing. We have a, uh, our factory is in Golden, Colorado, foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, it's a beautiful location. If you ever get a chance to visit, it's definitely worth the trip. Um, we you know, do all of our design of the systems, manufacturing, uh, marketing, sales, everything is right there, technical support. So uh, definitely dedicated to U.S. manufacturing. Uh, we also have sales and distribution facilities in Canada and Europe, as well as over 80 distributors worldwide. So you can get an epilogue basically in any country that you're in. Wow. So why a laser? Uh, you know, this is one of the things that I find at trade shows I often find myself talking about is that, you know, people, they see the technology and they get really excited to see it working. And then they want to know, well, I don't really have a use for it, but they do. I, I mean, almost everyone has a use for a laser and that's what's so exciting. Uh, one of the big ones is like you were talking about with the, uh, the Stanley trophies, how much they can mark them up, you know, a personalized product just really increases the value of any item or product that you're selling by a large amount. Um, if you can, make it even more custom than just a small change, it, it actually increases the volume, the price by, you know, tenfold easily. Um, you're able to expand your services. Uh, it provides another service besides what your company already offers. Um, so you can build upon your business. It's very quick. Um, unlike many technologies, a laser engraved piece can be done in minutes. Uh, setup time for the graphic takes longer than anything else, but if you've got a graphic ready to go, I mean, you can be up and running in minutes and you can run an entire job within seconds sometimes. Um, you already have customers. So you already have customers that are looking for personalized products. Uh, they might need to add their logo to a product. Well, why not you have you be the person that can offer that service to them? It's surprisingly easy to do. You know, we get a lot of people that come to us and say, I don't have a lot, any experience on lasers. How am I going to get up and running? And, you know, don't be scared because basically anything that you print to paper, you can engrave with the laser and it can be very simple to set up. And last, engraving is fun. You know, uh, one of the reasons I've been at Epilogue for 23 years is that 
I never can be bored because there's always something fun to do with the laser. You know, if someone asks me for a new application, we have a great time designing something and coming up with that. What, um, what, something about engraving, um, there's a, there's a lot of great suppliers that also make it easy when, you know, you gotta have the right equipment. But I've always heard great things about working with JDS and now Alpha Broder sells hard goods. So, you know, if you've got the right equipment, it's not hard to get your hands on the goods. And what's really cool is the equipment is really set up for both low and high run to, to some degree. You know, you, you can do those one off on demand orders because, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of Deco Network users, they have web stores. And their, their customers will buy branded products that they drop ship fulfill or it's a school and so forth. Well, it's a no minimum process. You know, it, it, it for, for you don't have to make it no minimum, but you absolutely can. It's not like there's a bunch of screens to make and, and things like that. Um, and then again, when, when the school comes and they want, you know, 200 of them, absolutely, uh, you, you can do it. So um i i always like that because it does seem you know customers they want more customization they want to buy less <laughs> more and more these days but having the flexibility of being able to do both you know screen printing i don't want to screen print two shirts i don't want to dtf necessarily a thousand shirts every process has a time and place and you know as we're going to talk about uh laser you, you can do a, a lot um but when you select the right one, the speed it and and range of products just just grows. Um, what you can do, but yeah, everybody seems to be getting into engraving. Everybody I talk to as well, James, promo products. You know, we we always think awards and trophies, and hey, that's great. But the promotional products and it's that lower run capability. Um, I love drinkware. You know. Uh, I, I love now, obviously it's not engraved because it's, it's, right. it's got a color there, but, um, what I love about, uh, promo products is just, they're constantly being looked at. You know, uh, if I have an engraved, my, my logo engraved and I gave it to a customer or they bought it, you know, they paid for it to market the business. Love that. Every time they open up the cupboard, they're looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. every time, you know, even if I don't use this, that logo, I'm going to throw it in my desk. And every time I open my desk up, guess what I'm going to look at? Boom, that. And then, you know, doing someone's initials or, um, you know, a nameplate uh, on a desk. There's just so many applications and so many ways to just keep reminding your customer uh, about your your brand. And you, you, it's kind of funny, James, you can show off your talents at the same time <laughs> uh, for them. But, yeah, what do you got next for yeah. us, James? Yeah, definitely. So what is a CO2 laser? You know, uh, there's this common misconception I often have to uh, stop is that there's not a tank of CO2 gas that you're using. <laughs> it, it, it's actually a, a metal tube that has a mixture of gases in it. Uh, it has CO2 gas is the big one. Um, and we electrically stimulate that gas and you get the molecules bouncing around in there. And there's a small escape hole at one side. So eventually the molecules move that way and uh, they become a beam of light. And then it's a specific, specific wavelength that's going to work on a variety of materials. You know, uh, CO2 lasers are great because they are compatible with so many materials. It's wood, it's marble, glass, acrylic, leather, fabric, paper, almost anything you put in there. Um, it won't work well on bare metals at the wattages we sell but coated metals work very well, anodized aluminum, things like that. Um, there's different kinds of lasers. You can get metal, you can get ceramic, you can get uh, glass laser tubes. Um, a lot of the less expensive systems on the market, you'll see you have the glass laser tubes and those are pretty good at cutting. They do a really good job at cutting, but can't uh, fire as quickly as we can on our CO2 lasers so that we can uh, get that really high engraving quality at high speeds. Also the, the glass laser tubes, uh, the lifetime of them isn't as long. Uh, we see an average of about five years before you need to recharge your laser tube. Um, a lot of times those are one to two years. And also ours are all air cooled. So uh, that's a big benefit because on the safety 
measures of it because uh, otherwise you have to have a water chiller attached to it and you're combining water and electricity so uh, it can be a little <laughs> bit more dangerous there depending on the, the quality of the system so you're saying every five years roughly that's when you would need to recharge the laser that's essentially your consumable for, la for lack of a exactly. better term. <laughs> yeah that is the consumable on the system you know uh, you would send it to us and we'll overnight you another tube at the same time so that you can be up and running again. The systems are completely user maintainable. So you're able to go in and change out that laser tube very, very simply, which is really right. nice. You know, we've, we make sure that everything on the system can be changed out by the user. So uh, it, it makes it very easy for our customers that are in the field to be able to get up back up and running if they do have an issue. Yeah, don't 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 send me a diagram and say this is how you fix something. I, I need plug <laughs> plug and play or it's not gonna work. I'll be calling out a tech. Um but step by step uh, videos, that's the way to go. <laughs> um but yeah, okay. So I only have to do it once every five years. <laughs> not even anything to worry about. I wish yeah, most exactly. piece of equipment in our industry was like that. Yeah, and it's completely it depends on so many different factors because yeah. we've got laser tubes that have been on the market for 15 years. I mean, it, it just really depends on the laser source, but uh, you know, it they they have very long lives, definitely. Cool. Would you say CO2 so the, lasers are the most common? Is is that what I'm typically seeing at most shows? Yeah, so CO2 lasers is the most common. Uh, diode lasers are one that are up and coming in the market. Uh, they're lower wattage as far as what they can do right now than some of the higher wattage CO2s that we have available. Uh, and they're a little limited on what materials because you can't do anything clear with them. Uh, no clear glass, no clear acrylics. But uh, yeah, so that's another type that are uh, in some of the low cost systems that you'll see out there. But yeah, CO2 is definitely the most popular still. Uh, the other laser we, main, we make is a fiber laser. And uh, what these are, it's actually a fiber optic cable that's uh, doped with ytterbium. And uh, the ytterbium gets excited uh, within the cable and that acts as both the delivery device for the laser beam as well as uh, the laser source itself. Um, it's very good for bare metal etching. Uh, you can get all kinds of marks on metal, uh, annealed marks, you can get deep engraving, uh, you can get a nice silver polish mark on it. Um, and then also on plastics, uh, it reacts differently than the CO2. The CO2, you're gonna get depth into the plastic, whereas with a fiber laser, it'll actually react with the uh, plastic and change the color of it. So if you have a white plastic, it'll often turn black. If you have a black plastic, it'll turn white. So uh, it can get some really cool effects with that. Um, so yeah, we uh, offer our fiber laser source both in a standalone unit where uh, you've got only the fiber laser in there, or you can get in a dual source where you have a CO2 and fiber laser both within the same machine. And that's really popular with shops that have kind of small space basically uh, and need to again, maximize the efficiency of the machinery I always say it's better to have a fiber and a CO2 laser next to each other because otherwise half your investment you can't use at any time. But, you know, for a lot of people, that is a good choice. James, that, that kind of pivots to one of my questions. One, almost every laser needs to be exhausted, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, and you can either go out the building or have you seen the fume extractors? Do they work pretty well? Very well. You know, at trade shows, we obviously use fume extractors as well as in our office. Uh, there's so many good brands out there that do a really good job of uh, cleaning the air. Uh, if you're going one of the little $200 ones, that's probably not going to really be efficient for you in the long term. Um, a lot of times you're looking at $1,000 plus to be able to get into a, a good filtration system, but you'll find the difference in the smell, especially if you're cutting acrylic or something like that, that uh, it'll really be beneficial for you to have. But exhausting outside is great too. You know, we've got a lot of our customers that do that. Uh, I would say the majority do if they can. Um, it's uh, very efficient and uh, much less co uh, costly just because you're not changing out filters all the time. James, full disclosure, yesterday I went and looked at a new shop location for myself 
and <laughs> I've got DTF equipment. I've got to exhaust that. And I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm really looking for an engraving machine and I'm hoping, uh, and I should actually say, I, I got to stop calling it engraving. I'm looking for a laser because I've learned that the laser doesn't just do engraving. Yeah, by, by calling it engraving as a process, yeah, it is, but it's really laser, lasering, I guess, is the way I like to look at it, because it's marking, cutting, uh, engraving, and so forth. Um, but I, I'm thinking to myself, because everything needs to be exhausted, I gotta go out. Uh, I would probably put it in my DTF room, but my question is humidity. You know, is there a certain humidity and environment that, that the machine needs to be in to, to work properly? We don't really have any specs on humidity. Uh, we haven't found that that affects the laser in any uh, serious way. We've got, you know, machinery in very humid climates as well as very dry climates, and okay. uh, they've performed very equally. So. Yep, I, I could see this being popular again because of the exhaust. You know, DTF is very popular. That has to be exhausted. Um, so it's safe to put it in again, higher, low humidity. Great to yeah, know that, that helped me, James. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now, uh, delivery systems of the lasers, there's two different kinds of delivery systems. Uh, our, the main product line that we sell is the flying optic laser system. And the laser is actually located at the back of the system. And then it's directed through a series of mirrors, uh, to the laser surface. And then the lens assembly moves in a left-right motion to deliver the beam to the surface of the material. And it's very much like your old dot matrix printers for people that remember them, uh, where it would just go back and forth and print the uh, image. Uh, Instead, you're firing a laser beam and much faster than those dot matrix printers could. Uh, The thing is, it's, it's limited in speed because you are moving back and forth and but it does allow for a very large work area. So we can offer up to a 48 by 36 inch work area with a flying optic system and get very uh, accurate beam width across the entire table still. Yeah, it, 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 okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, because when you say like the laser beam and all that, it makes me think of the old school whenever we would think of a laser. So it's in the back and is it, then the laser essentially being shot and then using mirrors to then bring it down. Is that essentially what's going on? That's correct. Yeah. And we've got a pretty sophisticated system that actually expands the beam as it comes out of the tube and then uh, brings it into a straight line. And then we bring it back down to a small point. And by expanding it and bringing it back down, we're able to get a much finer engraving detail. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So uh, here's a little video of it working. Uh, so you can see it's moving back and forth, and uh, it just moves up the table as it goes. So you can get very nice engraving across the entire table. Here we've set up three leather notebooks with a jig, so uh, you can get uh, you can fill up your entire table with the same design and uh, run it all at once. So that's really nice. Couldn't you build the Could you build the jig with the the, the equipment itself? Oh yeah, definitely. That one was cut out of a piece of plastic that I had laying around the shop and just cut out the holes to hold the jig and to hold the different notebooks and uh, do that all the time. Yeah, I I use cardboard. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can use to create a quick jig that you can use over and over again. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Those 3D printers printing the parts for another 3D printer (laughs) is what it's like. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So then uh, this is a cutting, Um, looks like it's running a little slow on the video, but uh, it's actually much faster than that. It's uh, so the laser will actually follow your vector line within the graphic and uh, be able to cut through materials and how thick you can cut through is based on the wattage of the system. So uh, we can cut through up to about three quarter of an inch thick hardwoods and acrylics with our 120 watt. We're going to be running it really slow, but you can do it. I usually don't suggest over half inch for that. You said 120 watts. So what is the range of uh, watts for, for these types of systems? So we offer from 30 up to 120 watts. Uh, 30 watt, I say, can cut through about a quarter inch thick hardwoods and acrylics in a single pass. Uh, whereas the 120 watt, like I said, I suggest up to a half inch usually on that one. 
Uh, and then, you know, we've got varying wattages in between as well. So the watt itself essentially controls um, the strength of the laser, which will determine Correct. kind of depth. Does it also affect the speed? So it'll affect how fast you can run the machine to get to the same engraving depth. So like if I'm okay. running on wood on a low wattage system, I'm going to have to slow down the machine to get to a certain depth, whereas on a high wattage, I can run it 100% speed and still get to that same depth. So I might even have to turn the power down because you can also adjust your power as well as your speed. So I can set that uh, the power level from 1% to 100% of the power output. So if I uh, don't need to use full 120 watts, I can turn it down to 30 watts really at the same time. Cool. Cool. You just take take it down 75%. Um, but if I were marking, you know, doing the smallest amount of depth um, at every, you know, I had a 30 watt and 120 watt two piece of equipment. If I'm going the same depth, they're roughly the same speed. You know, if it's barely going any depth, Correct. is that mm -hmm. that's, okay, cool. that that is very true? Yeah. Or if I'm running on, let's say, anodized aluminum, I'm going to run at 100% speed no matter what. So. 30 watts and 120 watts isn't going to give you a difference on that kind of material. So materials you're going to use are definitely a big consideration when you're talking about what wattage you need. Makes sense. Uh, second uh, beam delivery system we offer is the Galvo laser. Uh, this is a little different because the um, laser source is actually located above the work surface and then uh, mirrors actually rotate very quickly back and forth and around in different directions to change the uh, angle of the beam. And so you can get very, very high speed because you're not moving an entire apparatus back and forth. You're just moving a couple mirrors very quickly. Um, what this does, though, it also limits the work area because the mirrors limit how far you can engrave before they go out of focus. So uh, like the our Fusion Calvo system, we'll engrave up to a six by six inch work area. And and are these newer? Is is Gal are Galvo lasers kind of newer technology? Galvos have been around for a long time. Um, they are used a lot of times. You'll see them in the metal industry, and that's what we offer is our fiber laser within the Galvo unit. And because a lot of times the metal parts you're going to be engraving are smaller. So uh, if you don't want to, I mean, you've got the option of using the flying optic fiber laser of ours that can fill up the entire table, walk away, come back, and all your parts are engraved. Or if you want to do one, two at a time, uh, the Galvo can be a very good option because you uh, you will have to sit there and switch out your parts constantly, but they uh, are engraved very quickly. So those serial so numbers. you can see like, it going. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to move through engraving this metal very quickly. You can do multiple passes if you want more depth. Uh, you're just changing your speed, power, frequency, and focus to get different kind of marks. So we give lots of suggestions for uh, different uh, uh, materials and different marks and what you're going to try to achieve on them. Yeah, I've seen those are fast. I was like, whoa, what, what's the difference yeah. here? But the big big one is you're, you're limited and you're not really trying to go, you know, depth. You're trying to mark, uh, you know, a part, a serial number, something like that is probably the bread and butter. You're not doing a lot of signage, I wouldn't think, with that type of machine. Probably not signage, no, no, not with that, with the limited size, especially. So next we're going to get into some of those different applications we were talking about that uh, you can make money with with the laser and different industries you can target if you do have a laser. Apparel and fabrics, you know, this is definitely a popular one. Uh, appliques are definitely a big uh, use of the lasers because you can cut out your applique and uh, it'll actually sear the edge of the fabric. So you get a really nice, uh, no fray kind of cut to it. Uh, it's even used in quilting a lot of times, you know, people that have a lot of uh, extra cash to spend and want to uh, be able to cut out all their quilting things. So that's really cool. Um, the custom wood broom hats, uh, leather patches. You'll see that a lot of times uh, popular right now on uh, on hats that are out there. Uh, they, sorry, James, but you're absolutely oh. right. Those those leather patches on hats. I actually was at a shop last week. Uh, I was doing a success story video with them, 
and they do a ton of leather patches and it just watching hey look we have these different types of raw leather they um would throw it in the bed they engraved it and then you know they washed it they took it to the seamstress they sewed it on the hat it's the quality there it was just incredible i mean it was not it's not your heat applied leather patch so no very becoming very very popular and just watching it be done i was like man this isn't as hard as i was thinking it is i gotta have somebody who knows how to run a sewing machine if i'm gonna apply it but wow the value there it, it it's it's awesome and then i also like you know being able to take a hat bill you don't want to really printing bills and so forth not fun but being able to etch something a design like that really really cool yeah definitely uh, you can get some really unique designs that way. You know, and uh, there's also uh, heat transfer materials that you can actually place on a t-shirt. And uh, basically, you'll take the heat transfer material, you'll engrave it away the areas you don't want. So you've got a reverse image and then uh, transfer it uh, through heat to yeah. your t-shirts or anything like that. So uh, it does have to be a PVC free uh, material because uh, PVC is the one thing the laser really is not good with uh, the, the fumes that come off of it are dangerous both to the laser and to yourself so uh, no vinyl is the big thing with the lasers cool uh, automotive uh, we've got a lot of uh, car parts that are engraved with the laser you know we uh, do the SEMA show every year which is uh, one of the big trade shows for uh, custom car parts and uh, you know it, Serializing them for ID tracking, uh, branding them is the big one, uh, adding logos and custom logos to any kind of part. It's very popular. Words industry, you know, this was our bread and butter for a long time. Uh, great custom you know, acrylic and wood plaques, uh, add name plates to trophies. Uh, you know, there's a lot of places you can sell awards into from schools to uh, sports clubs. And corporate awards are definitely a big one as well. You know, we uh, we actually won best place to work in Denver a few years ago, and uh, the award that we received was laser engraved by an <laughs> epilogue. And they actually, the person that the, the shop that engraved it put on the bottom uh, the information about his machine because he was really proud that he was using his epilogue to give us an award for that. So that wow. was really cool. Uh, and this is a big industry as well, breweries and distilleries. You know, we sell a lot of machinery into this industry, but also there's so many breweries out there that are, you know, a lot of times you walk in and they've got their entire promotional area where they're selling all kinds of things that uh, are engraved uh, with their logo or printed with their logo. Um, you see, you know, the growlers, the pint glasses, uh, but also apparel. So. You know, a, definitely a big place to get into and target with your laser system. And the perceived value, I feel like any time a design is technically embossed or debossed, you know, if it's raised or if it's impressed, the perceived value goes up. You know, flat is boring <laughs> to a lot of customers nowadays. Correct. And, um, like full disclosure, what do I have here is that this is a UV DTF transfer, a new way to, to do things. Here's the problem. This is not dishwasher safe. And I know if I let my wife get their hands on this, it's going to be an issue. And, and that's, then I can't really sell this product. I wouldn't be confident to have it on the shelf at all. It's cool, but, um, and you know, sublimation, hey, that's cool, but sublimation is limited to just white. Engraving, you have a lot of different color options. And again, just being able to run your finger over it and just see the etched, the value is there. So I always looked at engraving as, you know, a kind of a premium retail product, um, more than your, your average, just something printed. Um, it just, I think we all think it's nicer. I would rather have an engraved glass award than something that's sublimated or printed. I would agree. I mean, that's an excellent point. Yeah, I do think the perceived value of the customer is much higher when it's engraved. And, you know, I, I always think that laser engraving is the best way to go. But, you know, I might be a little biased. <laughs> well, every process has a time and place. Um, 
but you can also, um, depending on what you're going on, you can get some different coloring and, and so forth, which is, you know, I know we're going to talk about here in a little bit because you're not necessarily always limited to just a vector. Is that correct? I mean, there's instances oh, where true. you can use a bitmap and do an image and just, it's kind of like uh, screen printing and halftones. Like look at your newspaper. They're primarily printing with just black. <laughs> They're just dropping more dots, you know, and it, to, to make some of it look black, some of it to look gray and so forth. Um, which, you know, when I go to Epilogue's booth at the shows, it's like, whoa, uh, that's not a logo. That's it. That looks like a photo that's been engraved. So, um, exactly. yeah. Yeah. I often do uh, photograph engraving for people because it's, it is so popular and it, it just creates such a interesting look. Uh, when you do a photograph on wood, it is amazing. I think I'm going to have a sample in here somewhere where I actually show that, but you know, it, it really stands out. I know I've got wedding photos of mine that are engraved that uh, sit in the house and or everyone that comes in says, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Can I have one <laughs> of my wedding, obviously? Well, it's a, yeah, it, 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 what I also like about this, um, James, is it's a process that's good for B2C, B2B, you know, everybody mm -hmm. needs this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, mm -hmm. talk to us about, yeah, some of the home decor, because I bet if most of our, you know, attendees, they walk around their house, they can find 15 things that were engraved within two minutes, because uh, it's just all around us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, cutting boards, you know, custom furniture design, even I've got, uh, some, uh, you know, we've lent machines to HGTV before for some of their home decor shows because they've been able to use it to actually create custom furniture. You know, uh, you can do, you know, you can't buy a bamboo cutting board without an engraving on it because I can guarantee every bamboo company out there has their logo on their bamboo cutting board. Yep. And it, it's not only that, but it, it's all kinds of home decor. And, you know, it, I, if you walk into a Bed Bath & Beyond store back when they had those. Uh, you could, I couldn't walk through without grabbing a bunch of things to engrave because there were so many different items that are laser engravable. And and it's safe, right? You know, you, <laughs> printing something, you and then you try to eat on it. Well, there's some some fear there versus engraving. We know that we're not, in, you know, introducing something that's going to be chemically dangerous after it's been washed. Exactly. I mean. A great example of how food safe it is, you know, uh, we did Thanksgiving pies recently where we actually engraved the top of a pumpkin pie and got a really cool engraving on it and then served it for Thanksgiving dinner. And it was yeah. really cool. That's what I, I've seen, you know, I'm going to take a tortilla and I'm going to do a face on the tortilla. That That's, exactly. you know, it wasn't even getting into that, but yeah, you can actually take food and decorate it. And yeah. it, it, it's, I've seen it in a couple different, um, you know, just different situations. Like, wow, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Definitely. Uh, industrial marking, you know, this is really where the Galvo and the fiber laser come into play. Uh, you can engrave barcodes, uh, serial numbers, etch control panels. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can use metal with the laser and that's exciting. Uh, if you do have a CO2 laser, there is a way to actually mark the metal, which is kind of interesting. There's a spray called Surmark that you spray on the metal first. And then when you laser engrave it, it actually permanently bonds that mark to the metal. And then you wash off the excess material with water and you get a really dark black mark. So for customers that don't have a fiber laser, there is an option for working on these kind of materials as well. So, okay. So you're, I've always wondered this. So that black there, obviously <laughs> the dye and so forth didn't have black underneath it. And um, so that's literally spraying an activator, engraving mm -hmm. over it. And now instead of it just, you know, being a lighter shade or a darker shade of that metal, it's actually black. And in this case, now I can truly scan it with no issues. Exactly. So you get a really nice dark black mark. Uh, really popular actually with the military because uh, you're not changing the tolerance of the tool. You're not removing any material. And to get that mark off, you actually have to remove metal. 
uh, it is truly permanent. So uh, it does a really nice job of that. Cool. I learned something new every day, James. <laughs> uh, pet products. Uh, you know, engrave pet ID tags. If you go to PetSmart and get your dog tag engraved, that's our laser in there. Um, you know, leashes, bowls, pet memorials. There, there's just so many different ways to use the laser within each of these individual uh, industries that it gets really exciting to, you know, you find a niche and you, you can grow it very quickly because people within that industry grow, learn about you and see what you can do. And suddenly you're selling to a lot of pet stores and veterinary offices or shelters that need their logos, all kinds of things. Recession proof market there for sure. That's right. Exactly. Uh, promotional products uh, like your your water bottle there uh, we can actually engrave into it and a lot of times uh, these are powder coated so you'll get a really nice silver look underneath um, depends on the actual tumbler as to what the under color is but uh, they they come out really nice looking and very high-end looking as well so that's nice and you have all those different colors available to you you know again it's not like the sublimation limitation you only go on white now, um, I'll take that black tumbler and then uh, engrave on it and actually reveal that silver, which that that um, stainless steel look is just always looks sharp. Um, Definitely. It's really any color. Real estate. We've got customers that uh, target the real estate industry because they'll actually uh, – offer to engrave custom items for new homeowners that the real estate agent can give it to. So, you know, when you buy a house, a lot of times your agent gives you a gift and they can give you a really custom gift this way. So, and it's, it's ongoing business. So every time they sell a house, you have another uh, piece to sell. So that's a, a fantastic industry as well. A drop in a bucket compared to their commission. So I'm sure they're glad to give them the nice. Exactly. Uh, signage is a big one. Uh, you know, you go into any company, you're going to see signage all over the walls that are directional signage that are, you know, office nameplates that have all types of things. So hotels, schools, hospitals, libraries, and you can use such a variety of materials to make these signage. You can make them very, very unique. So you can combine wood, acrylic, plastic, marble, whatever you need to, and get some really great signage. Schools. Uh, this is a, you can find a school that doesn't have a laser now, which is uh, becoming increasingly rare. It uh, is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a huge industry for us because the uh, schools definitely see the value of the laser, not only for being able to create all these, uh, create their own awards, create their own signage. Uh, they can use it in so many different curriculum, um, from woodworking to art to architectural design. I mean, you know, it's, it's all types of things. So um, they, can, they uh, are a great industry though for if you do find one that doesn't have a laser that you can offer these services to them and show them what the value, what the value of getting their items all done with one place is. Weddings and events. So here's a couple of the photography ones that I was talking about. Uh, this is on leather and on marble in these photos, but uh, guest books, signage, bridal party gifts, uh, there's all types of things. So you uh, can contact a wedding planner and show them what services you can offer and they can sell it to their clientele. So uh, there's a, a lot of opportunity here, definitely. You know, when I got married, I, I actually, the wedding planner uh, apologized because she was running a little bit late and uh, I, I she said I was laser engraving something at a, a shop for a custom project for one of the weddings. And I was like, oh, what kind of laser were you using? So she showed me the video. And yeah, it was an epilogue. So that was really cool to see. But I, I can guarantee I had a lot of laser engraved uh, items at my wedding. Um, so Galvo or fiber or a CO2, like, can they all do work with a vector or a bitmap? to accomplish this? Correct. You're actually using the same uh, driver for the lasers, regardless of if you're using the fiber or the CO2. All you're doing 
it uh, is changing what type of laser that you are working with at the time uh, within our settings. But uh, you're able to take any graphic and print it to our software uh, from Illustrator, CorelDRAW, Inkscape, anything. And uh, the laser will be able to interpret it. And uh, anything that's a vector line can be engraved or cut. Anything that's a raster image, like a bitmap or a JPEG, will actually be engraved. And obviously, the higher the quality of that bitmap or JPEG, the better it's going to engrave. I, you know, you, if you take a web image that you've just copied off the web and it's not high resolution, you're not going to get good results. Uh, same as if you printed it. So uh, the laser works that same way. So the higher the detail within the graphic, the better it's going to engrave. So um, would you take like a full color image, turn it to grayscale, and then wherever it's darkest, it goes deeper? Or how does that exactly work to create that image? So you don't even need to turn it into a grayscale. I'll actually work with color images a lot of times. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to interpret those as shades of gray the same way as if you did transfer it over. Okay. Um, it's going to fire the laser closer together wherever it's darker within the image because your dot density is higher. So you're going to create a darker mark, basically, creating that natural grayscale effect. Okay. So we also have a. Th I'm sorry. So uh, it's a lot like a newspaper again, like we said. Mm -hmm. It just it, we're not going deeper into the paper at all. We're just putting yes. things closer together and giving that perceived, you know, look that it that it's different okay yeah we also have a 3d setting within our software that interprets the graphic a little bit differently and so what it'll do instead of changing the dot density depending on how dark it is it'll actually slow down the laser where it gets uh whenever it gets darker within the image so you can actually create curved effects to your engraving uh, this is really popular when you're trying to create a graphic uh, kind of a, a design that's got kind of a little bit of texture to it within it. And you can duplicate that graphic over and over again and get a really cool engraving. Uh, text works really well with this as well as a quick way to really customize your engraving. And this is all Epilogue software that comes with the equipment? Correct, yeah. So uh, we're, we're open architecture software. Uh, and basically what it does is you can design in any graphic software you prefer there's so many great ones out there and then you're just printing your design to the laser so uh, you send it over and uh, it comes into our software and then you can uh, choose your material to, for whatever settings you want and you can move your artwork around on screen however you need to do it cool uh, we do have a camera system within all of our systems uh, uh, basically, it's going to allow you to place your artwork precisely on your item. Um, you know, these these are pretty amazing game changers. Uh, you know, when I'm doing something custom, I'm able to set it up so quickly now. Um, where I don't use it probably is if I'm doing large runs because then I can fill up the whole table. And it's great to have my zero zero point at the top left corner set out all my artwork or use a jig in that situation. But when you're doing a one-off custom, this is really the way to go. It's just really a game changer on that. Actually, we've got a little video here. Um, this is a cool feature. We can actually copy the background image from the camera and bring it into our graphic design software. And then we'll just uh, paste it in. And then we've got the exact location of our artwork that we can uh, manipulate very easily within our graphic software. So here I'm just going to create a quick outline around uh, my image so I can precisely create a graphic that's going to only fill that area of the guitar that I want to engrave. Um, this is such a great feature because without the camera, this would be very difficult to get that exact dimension that you need when you're engraving. Once we've got that, then we'll bring in our artwork. Oh, we can actually adjust the graphic however we need there. Now I'm just going to power clip it inside that.
And now the great thing is since we copied the entire work table, when we print this over to laser, we're going to be able to uh, have it in the exact position that the piece is already laying on the table. So we don't have to see. Now we've got our background image from the camera itself, and it's still perfectly aligned, which is uh, makes it really nice to be able to quickly set up artwork that way and get really precise engraving. When the laser goes off of the product, though, and it starts hitting the bed, what happens there? Like, you know, if it's full bleed. So, I... Like I said, the CO2 laser, yeah, the, the CO2 laser is not going to affect the bed. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the uh, CO2 laser is just going to reflect off the metal, so it won't be a problem. If you're using a fiber laser, you will mark the bed. And I okay. can guarantee all of uh, the laser beds at Epilogue have been marked by uh, the laser. You know, I, I got a new Galvo laser recently at the building. I said, no one marks this bed. I want to make <laughs> sure it's really nice for video work. And uh, I immediately marked the bed. So everyone was very uh, happy that it was needed uh, and not, <laughs> not them. But you can see it, it came out exactly on dimensions of the guitar piece there. I mean, so it, it's really nice. And we even engraved it on that curve up the neck. Um, the laser's not going to go out of focus right away. So uh, you're going to get a little bit, maybe less definition within your engraving, but you get a really cool look still. Um, so you can actually engrave around a curve using that method. So what is optimal off contact? Correct me, I'm wrong, but the bed can go up and down so that it then changes mm -hmm. the height of how far it away, is away from the laser, right? Correct. So it depends on your lens. So ours is a, the one that comes with the laser is a two-inch lens. So two inches away from that position is the optimal point where you're going to get that finest detail. Because a laser beam is coming down in a cone shape and back out in a cone shape. So the closer you are to that center point of your two cones meeting, basically, is going to be your optimal engraving. Um, we do have an autofocus on the machine, so it'll actually uh, come down, it'll touch the surface of the material and move back up to exactly two inches. Um, or you can even set your material height within the software. So you can say, I know my material is you know, exactly a quarter inch and you can put that in and the bed will automatically adjust for that. Not good to have a strike, I imagine. You know, like you said, the neck of that is higher. So how, what would happen if all of a sudden that hit, obviously things are going to move and <laughs> things are going to be etched that probably shouldn't be. Right. It's got to happen, right? Yeah, you can definitely have that happen. So, uh, you want to make sure that your piece doesn't have a lift that's over two inches. But if you do, we actually offer a four inch lens that moves it even further away. So like if I was doing the inside of a recessed bowl and I wanted to do the bottom of the bowl, I can actually do that as well. Otherwise, you just have to make sure your engraving area fits within the area before it raises. So basically the laser head's going to go back and forth only within the engraving area of the graphic. So it's not going to go all the way across the table. So if I have something that's lifted over here, that's not going to be an issue. Okay. It's only within that small area. You'll have the laser head does, let's say this is my actual graphic I'm engraving. It will go a little bit past both ways because there needs to be some turnaround time for it. But uh, it, it's minimal compared to uh, what it could be if it went across the whole table. And it, it could not, you know, raise up and do the neck, like in this example, all so at once. So we, it can't do it all at once. What you can do is, if I have those two parts of the graphic, I would actually use my autofocus setting within the uh, the software, and I could set those as two different processes, and I can say this one is at this height and this one is at this height, and it'll adjust the table between the processes. It won't run all the way. The graphic at one time, yeah. it'll run it in two separate sections, basically. So you can do that. Okay, cool. So it'll it'll do the one lower arrays, go on to do the next. Cool. Correct. Uh, this is another feature that 
if you don't have a touch screen, you don't know how valuable this is. A lot of lasers you'll see that only have a start button. Uh, but this will actually, we've got memory within the machine, so we can send over all of our jobs. We can actually have all of our settings right there that we can adjust right at the laser. So if I run a test, if I need it to be a little deeper, I can actually adjust my settings right there. Um, there's also a lot of capabilities as far as I can raise and lower the table. I can even precisely nudge it and see exactly how far away it is so that I can get really precise engraving every time. Um, you can also autofocus right from the table. So I can go in, I can move my laser head to where I want to focus it and hit autofocus and I'll do it. And all the settings are, uh, for the system are there too. So you'll see here, it, it's pretty extensive list of different things that can be adjusted. Uh, you can even, you can lock these down. So if you don't want your users being able to change things, they can definitely do that. But when you do need to change something, it's very simple to do. So, uh, James, I'm a, yeah, I'm a I Apple even, guy. I'm an Apple guy. Can I plug mm -hmm. my Mac into an epilogue or is it kind of PC based? Uh, currently it's PC based. Okay. Just like all my other equipment but, that I have, it, it's that's just the business world. Uh, and, just and, wait a little bit and soon, soon we might have some announcements. So, mm -hmm. cool. but yeah, but yeah, I can even permanently save the the job. So uh, if I, there's something that I need to run the next day or that I run all the time uh, when I turn on that machine, the job will still be there. So I can just start up my job and keep engraving, which is really nice. Uh, this is another one. This one's available on our pro line. Uh, it's the registration mark camera system. So if you have a pre-printed piece, um, you can actually have uh, registration marks on there. So no matter where it's been printed on that piece, because when you print that piece, you can't guarantee it's going to be in the exact same position every time. Uh, so wherever it is, it'll actually, the laser head will come out and there's a camera located on the laser head that um, here I'm going to select the registration marks. And it's going to align this graphic perfectly, which is wonderful if you've ever used a pre-printed piece and want to cut it out. Uh, this is uh, keychains that have been printed, uh, UV printed with uh, on acrylic. So now you can see there's gonna be a hunting routine where it actually, the laser head comes out it finds the position of that registration mark. And then uh, it will cut it very precisely, which this is this is great for this kind of application. You're, you're not kidding. The touch screen and the camera, I mean, that has to make life a lot easier. It definitely does, you know. I, We've got some old time users uh, that have been in the industry for a long time. I'll never use the camera. I, why would I do that? I love putting things in the top left corner. I know exactly where it is. And then as soon as they used it, they said, never going back. <laughs> well, and it also goes back to when you were saying like the learning curve and the ease of use, you can bring somebody mm -hmm. on. It's screen printing embroidery. It's an art. It takes a long time. Now, you know, you, you want to get someone properly trained, but they can feel comfortable very quickly with doing the work. I mean, it, it's it's not tremendously skilled um, when you're using the right equipment and you're using it properly, which when you have the features and the tools within that equipment, it, it makes life a lot easier. Um, just like that placement. Epilogue can do the best job possible of marking or etching it. But if the thing was cockeyed to begin with, it doesn't matter. So um, yeah, make, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely. So uh, on our product line, we do offer three different series within the CO2 lasers, uh, the Maker, the Fusion Edge, and the Fusion Pro. And your basic differences between these are going to be uh, size, so as you move up in the product line, you can actually get larger machines, especially the Fusion Pro, where you can go up to 48 by 36 inches. Um, and also throughput. Throughput is a big one. Um, so 
Fusion Maker runs at what we call 60 inches per second. And that's going to be your top speed at the center of the table when it's moving all the way across. Uh, that's the kind of the traditional way that lasers have been classified for speed. Um, but when I move up the edge, I can actually do that in 120 inches per second. So I can double my throughput basically at that point. Uh, Fusion Pro all the way up to 165 inches per second. Very, very quick. So when you're able to do an application that you need a lot of speed on, or you're doing a lot of them, when I clean up that whole table and I'm running, you know, running keychains all day long, I can get through so many more uh, uh, of the product basically in less time. Uh, that Fusion Pro also has more camera functionality is another nice one is that registration camera is built into it so you can do those pre-printed pieces as well uh, your table sizes are 24 by 12 24 by 24 36 by 24 and 48 by 36 so there's a lot of options based on you know if you go into this thinking that you're only going to be doing one off that 24 by 12 inch table might be perfect for you. But if you think you're going to grow your laser engraving to the point where you're going to fill up a table, you know, moving up in size can really uh, make you a lot more money within that same time frame. Um, and, and do each of these come in those different watt setups? Like so, you talk so there, the wattages are also by product line. So, we start at 30 watts uh, on the Fusion Maker. The Fusion Edge starts at 50 watts, and the Fusion Pro is, I believe, 60 watts. So uh, the larger machines have higher power, basically, that you can get within them. Okay, and the and the inches per second, um, that is the amount, and it has nothing to do with the depth, though. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's just the speed that we can run the lens assembly back and forth at while keeping high quality engraving. Cool. Uh, Fusion Galvo is our other product line. Uh, you saw that work earlier. Uh, it comes with two different lenses within it. So uh, it comes with both a four by four inch field F-163 lens and a six by six inch F-254 lens. Um, it automatically, whichever one is put into the machine, you're gonna be able to, it recognizes it, it uses a different camera so that it can uh, automatically adjust your table height, your image location, everything right away. Uh, the door is automated, so as the job ends, it will actually open. You can remove your item, start your next job, and the door closes again. It's got the camera positioning. And it works with any graphic software, which is a big benefit of this Galvo because a lot of Galvo units will use uh, proprietary software that is much more cumbersome, I would say, to use. Because uh, a lot of times when you're working on metal, you're setting up a lot of processes. Basically, I'm going to set up hatch arrays that are going to engrave into the metal one way and then another way so you get really smooth depth within the metal. And uh, our software makes that very simple to do. So I can add multiple hatch patterns that are at different angles automatically. I can save all those settings. And next time I want to use that same pattern, I can do it within seconds. Now, James, can you give us an idea of what, like, and I know there's different setups and so forth, but what is a Galvo laser run? What is a maker and so forth? What are we mm -hmm. looking at to get started? Um, yeah, definitely. So uh, the Galvo start at $16,000. Um, there's three different wattages, basically, uh, of Galvo lasers. But uh, yeah, the 16,000 is what you're looking at for a really good quality Galvo laser that's got uh, a lot of power. You're going to be able to get really nice engraving with. Our CO2 lasers, uh, Fusion Maker, the 24 by 12 inch is our starter unit, and it is $10,000. Uh, it comes with a 30 watt CO2 laser tube, so cut through quarter inch thick hardwoods and acrylics. And that bed does move down, so you can fit a rotary attachment in there uh, where you can actually engrave your tumblers and 360 degrees. You can do flashlights, you can do anything like that. So uh, it makes it really nice. Yeah, we kind of forgot to, I, I brought, forgot to bring that up, but yeah, flats, one thing. It's kind of, I think of like embroidery. <laughs> you, you, you sew embroidery on a hat differently because it's got a it's not a flat surface it rotates 
um, when it comes to doing like, again, I've got like this flashlight here, um, drink where if it's cylinder, you've got to rotate the product as the laser is doing the work. Um, so most, I got to think most of the time somebody gets a rotary attachment with, it, it, it's almost a, a given, right? Yeah, you want to be able to do yeah. for most both. Yeah, and I would agree. Uh, you know, I do, you know, if I'm doing multiple tumblers, uh, there's actually a video up on our YouTube channel that we've done recently where we're using our four inch lens without the rotary attachment and filling up the entire table with tumblers. And what, because what the four inch lens does is it uh, actually elongates the beam. So it's going to stay in focus longer. So wow. I can focus halfway down on my curve and I can still get about two and three quarter inch wide, uh, logo on a tumbler wow. and no problem mm -hmm. but with the rotary attachment it actually could do a full 360 correct mm -hmm. yeah and is it when we're doing that is it are we marking engraving slower than if it was a flat typically do we slow the machine down out of curiosity you're you're not slowing the machine down so if i'm uh, you you're only slowing it down based on the material so if i'm doing okay. uh you know a, a let's say a tumbler, I'm going to run that at the same speed, regardless if it's powder coated on a cylinder or if it's powder coated flat. So that doesn't affect okay. it. Cool. So these are really the questions that I suggest people ask themselves when they're trying to figure out which laser is right for them. Uh, you know, the first is purpose and application. So what's your primary use case? Are you engraving wood? metal, glass, a uh, different material, that's going to really help to determine which of these technologies is best for you, whether it's CO2 or fiber lasers. Also determining the size and volume of the uh, items that you plan to engrave, um, that can help you decide which of these bed sizes is right for you and the power of the laser. But, uh, you know, besides the uh, primary use case, you need to think about what you would hope to grow into. So. Uh, you're making an investment, so make sure that you're not going to outgrow the laser basically immediately. Next up is laser type. You know, are am I doing wood, leather, paper, plastics? Then CO2 is perfect. Am I going to be doing you know metals? Then that fiber laser. And then, like I said earlier, you know, we do have that dual source where you can have both the CO2 and fiber in one. Um, but it's whether or not that's the right case or am I going to have enough work on my fiber laser that uh, it makes sense to have a separate one that sits next to my CO2 so that, you know, when I have a metal and job that comes in, I'm not also trying to run, you know, my, my laser's already busy with uh, the wood plaque that I'm working on. I can't run that until it's done. If I've got them side by side, I can do both at once. Throughput. This is a huge one that people often don't think about. Uh, it's how many jobs per day am I going to be able to run on this machine? Um, because if you're using a slower machine that's not running at a uh, 120 inches per second, let's say, and it takes twice as long to do that job, I'm going to be able to turn out half as many, much product. So uh, that all affects your profits, definitely. Um, you know, I would say, what's the balance between power and speed uh, based on your production requirements that's going to be optimal for you and your budget? That really is what it can come down to. It's a and lot finally, harder to find great, you know, employees to bring on. And the faster the machine is, the fewer additional machines you have to have and the fewer different people you have to have running them necessarily. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Aut automation uh, is the big thing nowadays and yeah. speed. You know, Definitely. Food. Yeah. And we do have online training as well. So when you do have that new operator come aboard, uh, they can go through our training suite and find out how to use the laser very quickly. And, you know, that's, that's definitely a benefit as well as being able to, how easy is the machine to learn to use? Are you going to be doing complicated programming or is it as simple as printing from you know, Illustrator, uh, it makes a big difference. You know, and the final question I always ask is what engraving area is going to be optimal for you? So, you know, 
choose a bed size that's going to accommodate the maximum dimensions of your typical workspace um, and ensure that engraving area is spacious enough to allow for your future expansion uh, and larger projects that'll come in because a lot of times those larger projects uh, if it is a large piece that you're engraving those can come with very uh, much higher prices as far as what you can charge so uh, take that into consideration as well so that's what i had for you today zach so uh, you know if you have any questions definitely can Contact us at sales at epiloglaser.com. You can uh, go up online, epiloglaser.com. Check out our YouTube channel. We've got new videos that we're adding every week up there. Uh, you know, if we were talking about that 360 degree engraving, I know that uh, I just put out a video uh, last week that has a really nice 360 degree engraving using our fiber laser. So uh, we've got new stuff all the time. Well, thank you so much, James, for your time again. For anybody out there who isn't aware, you know, much about Epilogue, Epilogue is absolutely a leader. You know, when I was thinking about, I, I really want to do a webinar on engraving. It, there wasn't even a question of who I wanted <laughs> to be on here to talk about it because you guys are absolutely the leaders. Um, talked to a lot of shop owners, uh, been in a lot of shops with, with Epilogue, only have heard just great things. Um, and hopefully this was as helpful as was for me because... Um, I now know a lot more about the different types, the advantages, uh, what all they, they can be used for, um, different types of materials. And um, I'll be hitting you up, James, here in the next uh, month or so once I have my new shop. And now I know where I can locate it in, in the room and so forth. So um, thank you so much for participating and um, look forward to doing this, having a similar conversation in a podcast style here in the near future. Because uh, engraving, you know, we, we, we call it's deco network. It's not printing software. It's not embroidering software. It's decorating software. And, and engraving is definitely used by a lot of our users um, because, again, it, it just, it's growing and growing. Um, and it opens the door to a lot of those other, you're probably leaving a lot of money on the table if you're doing apparel decorating and you're not doing engraving as well because you, the same customers are coming to you to have their logo printed. They're getting things engraved. And sometimes it may be merch that they're wanting to sell. Sometimes it might be something for internal use. So it's just, it's it's a nice market to be in. It's going nowhere, it's only growing. And um, the, the perception, everybody thinks quality and 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 good things when it's, when it's engraved or marked, etched. Um, so thank you again so much, James, and uh, everybody should check out epiloglaser.com. Um, if you have any questions, what? Uh, sales at epiloglaser.com, right, James? That's the best way, yeah. All thank right. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully this was helpful. See you, James. Bye.